Okay guys, for today's video, I'm gonna do something a bit different. I wanted to answer something that I've been seeing a lot recently. Trindomir is bad, Trindomir is shit, Trindomir is 48% win rate, how can you have fun playing Trindomir? Uh, how shit is Trindomir champion? He gets countered by everything, how can you even have an impact? Blah blah blah. I'm seeing this a lot recently and, and I'm not happy with it. I'm not not happy with the state of Trinomir. I'm always happy about the state of Trinomir as long as it exists, you know. But I'm not happy about the fact that I'm seeing so many people just complaining about the champion and how can you even have an impact, etc. So apparently Trinomir is 48% win rate. Um, I didn't have that information and I don't think it even matters. I don't think it's information that you should even consider. And I don't think it tells us that much. Like just looking at the win rate and the percentages of wins up that item that shit that champion etc there's always much more to it always always and i think that for trindomir a part of it is ranger said it's day one of the season trindomir is going to be harder to play because he's going to get squishier and he's going to have very high attack speed builds and making it so it's more punishing and it's harder to make the champion function so a lot of people are gonna say that the build is bad the build is wrong or the champion is bad when it's just like tougher and harder but you can still have an impact and so for today's video i'm gonna just like do a quick run ton of opgs of tr a few trinomer players and then we're gonna do two vod reviews of two games that i played recently in the main account because i don't record those just to show you that there's there's hope there is like that's that's my goal to give you hope right now and you can still be impactful in Trinomir. it can work it's not that hard you just need to apply all the knowledge that you gathered throughout the years i will show you so for example that's me on main account rock king lover 53 percent win rate it's not many games four losses and i'm back to 50 50 but those have been my games recently and as you can see I still managed to have an impact, still a few bad games, but these games do exist. That one was pretty crazy, not gonna lie. Uh, this is Ranger, Ranger having like 68% win rate and he started playing last season low master elo players. Uh, this is Bowcap, this is Bowcap, he's playing at the Grandmaster plus it's GM Chal MMR, MMR every single game for 50 games and he has 54% win rate. So if I look at those guys, doesn't look like Trindomir is a 48% win rate champion and this is at a high elo or very high elo this is not in platinum emerald diamonds silver whatever so that's that I have to keep in mind now we're gonna look at the games let's go so let's see let me talk about the runes first so I don't take movement speed runes I think it's a bait but I take tenacity and soul resist I don't take the hp um and that's about it second win revitalize now that then flinching is shit uh legend tenacity of course and that's about it like that's my go-to runes almost every single game and i think it's the same for ranger and i think it's the same for bowcap um i i didn't see if uli has been playing recently but but most likely it's gonna be the same uh, i'm facing shen with ignite so i decided to go d blade uh even if he has an ignite i feel like i can i can abuse if i just play well and and yeah play my, my trades decently my spacing so because we're doing two VOD reviews i will try not to make them too long but still like yeah so that's the first thing you can you can do of course like you can still uh cheese people in that bush if the, if the leash deny the experience and that's why my, my last video's title is actually it's called um how dominant are you? Because that's basically the question I want you guys to ask yourselves. If you're part of these guys who are like, Trinomir is so shit right now, Trinomir is so bad, a uh, low percent win rate champion, etc. How dominant are you from minute one, from first waves? How, like, I just played on fundamentals right here, like level up timers, etc. So ask yourself that question. How much do I actually use that champion? My tool doesn't feel strong but how good do you does do we use it so yeah we'll see uh 
uh, getting a wave 3 crash right now so I have different options like either like the best thing would be to look for a dive or I could just base and have an item advantage and then guess what the wave is going to do it's going to bounce back to me and then I will have an item advantage here and I have flash and I have ghost and all he has is ignite and most likely I get a kill but I think yeah because he tries to hold that wave and he has no flash and I mean he he dashes in I misplayed that. I shouldn't have to flash. But we get the kill and he's gonna miss plenty of XP here. Even if he has TP, he missed the XP from the cannon and a couple of minions. Really good. Also, Trinamir is a very gold hungry champion. You need gold to function. You need gold to get that rage play, to get that Kraken, to get that PD. Navori, so. Now we have the situation that we called before. With being on our side, we having more items. And we can just go and look for that kill. So, basically, biggest thing that I did here was, again, level up timers. I dash in because I know I'm going to get my level 4. And then I go in the bush to cancel the minion aggro from all these minions. And now I don't get punished from fighting in his wave. And I can just... Run him down and kill. Pew, pew, pew. So you could say, yeah, but early games don't always go like this. Then it's easier to have an impact, but <coughs> I made it go like this. And I don't think it's going to be like the same kind of shit for our next game. Anyway, now we have grabs. So I'm taking responsibility. I'm not going for a slow, slow push. Grabs are spawning, so I'm gonna get my level 6 or close to it, and then if we take one grab, I actually get level 6. So I get my prior back, now Shen is losing golden experience, I don't move when I'm the one losing. And... We can look to play for those. Get them, get level 6. But at this time it's a 2v3, so I'm thinking that we shouldn't fight that. Well, we see we see TF now. Like my wave, I know it's good because it crashed and now it's bouncing, so it's gonna be good for quite for quite a long time. So I'm just looking for something. Nothing will happen. I just go back top. And then I could look to make the wave push back to me a bit more. Or I could look to set up for just a dive and actually push the the wave back to him. Uh best thing is to look at your sums. Like here I'm thinking, okay, well in 45 seconds I will have ghosts, so if I can have a wave crashing in 45 seconds with ghosts it's gonna be way easier. But I'm also looking for just trades and to contest whenever he's going for a CS. See if I can get something. I could have maybe dove him here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, if I were this Grump, if I didn't dive him, it's because I was considering that maybe uh, Evelyn would be coming. And if Evelyn is coming, I don't want to risk it. Now, I have a ward. I'm not seeing Ev. I'm just base here for the plate. Okay, I'm happy that I don't commit after all the time that I waited. Most likely I have a lot of gold here, so... We'll be looking to spend it. I have info on Ev now. Sierra and Ward. Hmm, I think I should have just dove him when I was of a sick crushing, crushing the wave. Now he knows that, that Evelyn is, is covering. Yeah, I, I could have dove him. Doesn't have flash. Match like it's not gonna be easy, but I think I think it, it it still works. Anyway, now we come back with an item advantage. And doesn't have TP. I have grubs. I was I was a bit too slow here. Catch him. Before he gets to the wave, playing for plays right now. Now, in between waves, taking something. 
tanking scuttle and basically that's something that you need to keep in mind by the way by this time my team died six times seven times all the kills are mine i realized that grubs actually you take it, it takes you such a long time to take grubs by yourself and you lose so much hp okay well shen was a bit too far in the lane i have course so i can run him down and we can use that to play grubs by the way, mental is a big part of it. You need to just keep playing, you know, when we were 2 and 7, and the kills were only on me. I remember, like, just not thinking about being 2 and 7 and the kills being on me, you know. I'm just looking for the best play. Um, and I'm getting better at this. Okay, so now we got grubs. We got 6 of them. The wave is crashing, so I don't really want to base. I'm going to look for the gold for Kraken. I think it's 1700 that they need. So I'm going to have it soon. So most likely I'm going to find the base timer now and play on my item spikes. Let's crush this. Base. I think I can... Uh, this, this, this. I'm looking to unzoom. I used to know how to do that. Okay, oh now I have Kraken. And I'm 2k gold up. <coughs> and we're gonna start needing to use that advantage to actually help our team win and not just like winning my side lane, you know. Okay, actually dashing in here, playing aggressively. I mean, I feel really strong because I have Kraken. So Vlad is able to follow, and we get one kill. And we get another. I think the flash is actually fine. I cut his path. I don't have an, exp uh, uh, an escape this way, and also we were only two making a play. Um, support was coming. Help was coming, so making sure we kill fast. And I can stay on the map without using ult. Up, oh, drop a pink ward because it's Evelyn. I wouldn't see her otherwise. Get that. Get the turret. And now I kind of chased Evelyn away. We saw her. She sees that I'm here and very dominant and very strong. Now we're going to keep snowballing that lead to other objectives, to others things so we use that to get five grubs or maybe six grubs actually and now we're gonna get herald and we're gonna start looking at objectives didn't change the way to play league didn't change from season 13 to 14 Oh, Kraken PD, I think it's a really good spike and I've been trying it more and more recently. I really like it. Now they're <coughs> fighting mid, they're dying. I come, I realize that Evelyn has a big shutdown, so I'm happy to commit for that. Get myself fed and work on the next... My next objectives. Here also I have a big shutdown and I don't want to give it for this, but I think, I think later I should give it for nothing. That's still a mistake that they do a lot. I really don't... I mean, I never like the meta, the shutdown meta. And I really don't like the fact that you get punished for playing well and having an advantage. Yeah, no, I just play around Vision. I know that he didn't see me after he took that pink. And I have so much damage that I can just get a pick. So at this point, I have 7 of the 11 kills on my team. Astro in the mirror. And still... Even if it's a 48% champion. As long as you use it according to his to its identity. And you make the best out of that tool that you have. You can still have a pretty big impact. So getting a lot of gold for myself. I want to keep getting more and more fed. Keep accelerating. I don't want enemy team to catch up with my gold. And always be in a position to make something happen. Now Drake is going to spawn in a minute. So I'm going to take my reset and go there, most likely. 
I think if I stay, it's because I need one more way for Rage Blade. Or maybe I'm going Navari, actually. So I end up being a bit late, and that's why you don't miss CS, guys. <coughs> if I didn't miss CS in lane, most likely I wouldn't have to stay for one more wave. And now it's actually re it's something really important. If you guys saw the video where uh, I was coached by a pro player and I um, asked you to try to find my mistakes, well, that was one of them. Like here, yes, I could base and come with an extra full item for Drake, but I would be late on Drake. Now, because I got delayed by first like TF, like not having my gold TF into Nico, but then I decided to stay because tempo is bad. And I need to stay on good tempo. So I will keep applying pressure. And even at that point, I'm, I'm stronger than anyone. I'm two levels up on TF and three levels up on the rest of his team. So even if I have 3k gold in the bank, it's better for me to just stay, chase every way, and make sure that we get this, this dragon. And then I can base whatever. And here, actually, it's the same. Like, I wanted to base, and then I realized my whole team is staying on the map. And then I see that uh, Vladimir based, and I'm like, okay, I can finally base and buy a full Navari quick bait. Really wanted to go side, saw that maybe a fight is happening and, and they're gonna overcome it. It doesn't happen, go back bot, keep a mid open. It's not way, it's not a one-dimensional champion anymore where you just perma split or perma group. You just keep your mind open and look at whatever is happening. So my idea is, yes, I'm pushing and I'm looking to play for this T2. But I also know that I'm wearing most of my team's gold. Look at this. I have as much gold as my bot lane. I'm close to it. So I also want to be there. But my idea is like, I could just be there, but I could also bring people bot and then rotate and get a number advantage. So yes, I'm staying bot and I'm pushing. But I know it's not my only way to have an impact. Here, I remember, like, I counted the CS, actually. I was pretty focused. Yeah, I'm pretty focused when I'm playing on main right now, not recording my games. And little trick that I did is just, like, body language. Uh, here, I know they might just be looking to poke me. And here, I see Nico. Why would Nico ever cancel her base here if it's just a, 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 a 2v1? I beat them 2v1. So I knew that Evelyn was here. 100% just because of Nico's body language. If she kept her base, actually, I would have stayed in my position and Evelyn could have had more space for me. So here, what I'm thinking is I could actually 1v3 them and maybe I need to look for that. But I think it's pretty inconsistent and if they play it correctly, they have actually ways to kite me for a long time. And if they kite me for a long time, they will end up getting the 1k shutdown. And... I didn't have much trust for my team doing Nash, because I think I remember like Rekka's typing hello Nash, hello Nash, uh, but team was not really following. Now I know that they're moving, and I'm pinging that they're moving, but if they're moving, they're moving away. And at this point, they don't have the position on Nash enemy team, so I don't think my team should have actually committed on, on finishing that Nash by the way. I used my sums for the dive. Uh, the ghost at least I needed, the flash I didn't, but I wanted to make sure that I live because I'm diving here to apply a ton of pressure and I know that Trinomir is actually still a speed pusher because of the attack speed. Even if you don't build Hallbreaker, you have so much attack speed that you actually push pretty fast. Okay, they actually stopped, which is really good. And now look at that. I'm actually winning that fight because Vayne has to base to defend on me. I cannot keep playing that fight. So I killed one. I like I brought them first spot. Then I kill someone. I get T2. I get T3. And I bring their ADC. I think that's pretty good impact. Still don't agree with my team doing that Drake though. Unless Evelyn used ult. She didn't. Yeah, Evelyn can out DPS on that Nash. But still. <coughs> I'm going there. Looking to have my impact now. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I mean, unless... Oh, she actually had flash and ult. Oh, she tried to go for the steal. She? Okay, that's just me being curious. She went a bit too early. Yeah, yeah, I don't... I, 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 I don't like that. But still, I'm going there. 
And actually, my DPS helps us kill Vayne. Make sure they don't ace us. Kill that guy. Get resource. Keep getting more and more feds. We have 3k gold. It, it was like one base, one item this game. So we have Rage Blade now. And there's a Drake in a minute. And it's soul already. So we're gonna play for this. But still, I'm probably gonna look to pressure uh, what it's called. Mid lane or just like, or maybe to actually end the game because I have, I have uh, Nash. Yeah, I think pressuring mid lane just makes way more sense. So I can ro maybe rotate to the fight. Most likely with Trint this season, you want to start the fight by autoing first. Even if it's minions, you, you want your, especially if you have PD and Kraken, and four autos to get your PD and your Kraken proc'd. Now I see that we're chasing them away. So I'm the one actually going on that break and taking it. That's what we're playing for. We're playing for soul. So, boop. We just get that. And now I'm looking to play for next wave. So the actual best thing to do when you have Nash is to send your team on a side lane and be mid lane yourself. Because here my team is very vulnerable to flanks from every side and I'm pretty safe. So actually, whenever you, you have Nash, the best setup is the opposite. But it's kind of hard to set up. And now I'm just most likely threatening to end. And again, like I'm winning this fight by not fighting it. Because now look at these guys. And Vayne is fighting by herself because these guys are backing. Because I'm pushing. And again, I don't want, don't want to give my 1k shutdown. But I created the space needed for them to push. As well so my idea right now would be to play for triple inhib and I, I'm actually pinging to go I should ping harder and I should actually go there but then I see that my team is looking to fight so I kind of feel like I need to be there kill one kill two I mean we don't really care about those fights Play for a turret. Hold on, CC still concerned about giving 1k shutdown. Looking to end the, the game in a clean way. Yeah, I, I think if it was only for me, I would have come, like asked on my whole team to commit for just like triple inhib. But they wanted to commit for an Nexus, so I kind of did it. So now we delayed the end. But most likely we're just gonna end now. We can actually take Nash. And you get the AD. Well, they decide to pressure a fight and just like go mid and end. So again, I'm not gonna go Nash by myself. <coughs> Doesn't make sense. If it was up, I would have probably. And that was a really good impact. 10k gold up on my opponent. And managed to use my Trindamere tool to its best, almost. And now we're gonna get into game two. So now, game two, we have a Trundle matchup. We have the same runes, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, exactly the same ones. Look what I'm doing. Like, I, I don't even remember doing this, but now that I see it, I do remember. How dominant are you from the start? How dominant are you? I know he's going on these. And I know that if I if I steal some of the little ones, <coughs> it doesn't get level 2. So now Nurturin is stuck at level 1 with no smite. And what do I lose for that? I actually lose nothing. Like 1 million of gold. Not even XP. And I put my jungler ahead from, from minute 1. What did it take? It took a ward that who put... I think it's TF. Yeah. My mirror puts a ward. Instantly I will use it. So yeah, pretty proud of that one. So now it's trying to match up. Trying to match up. Like, of course, you need to know your matchups. Uh, there's my matchups for cheat, if you can help. And trying to match up. Level 1, he beats you pretty hard. I've been my hacker him that Trundle was coming. 
And I think I do a mistake trying to help him here. Like he has space rush, he's actually pretty safe. Now I lose a bit of time, but I think it's because, yeah, I see, I see TF moving to him. Then I'm like, I need to um, to reward him, to reward TF for the, the time and the resources spent, etc. So I do goals, but they're, they're very out of reach. I could have seen that coming. Now I'm just losing a lot of golden experience top. But it's okay. I looked. I looked, I looked, I was being conscious about the game. So now we get a crash, fundamentals, so he's bouncing back. We have an item advantage now. I have an extra dagger. <coughs> but most likely I'm, I'm not going to prevent him from crashing. But what I'm happy about is that now I can play on the bounce back. Because grabs are spawning. And same here, usually I don't leave waves like this, but here I had a feeling that it would go out of hands. If I'm not there to help my team, uh, Hecarim had to pay for me getting crashed in early on, because uh, Trundle invaded him. And I see that we have mid prio, so because we have mid prio, I'm like, okay, this is winning, I will move. And also, you get rewarded on grubs, even if you lose experience top. You're rewarded on grubs because they give experience. They give actually a whole lot of experience. So that's why I'm staying for a bit. And then we're going to crash the wave. Up. Well, what happens here is that... Fundamentals, develop timers. I know that I'm getting level 6. So I'm training hard, getting his, demo his bone plating. And I have ghosts coming up soon. So I could have played that better overall and dive, have dived him without dying. But I actually end up getting a plating, getting the dive off and denying him all of this. If you remember and you make a parallel with last game, it's exactly what happened on level 3 against, against Shen. So, same shit, up, now we're gonna come back with an item advantage and the wave bouncing to us. <coughs> but he has an ult advantage, so I'm not gonna fight him for quite a long time, right? Until I have at least my next ult. Boom, 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 boom. Now, if he's gonna, if he's gonna look for a demolish proc like this, of course I'm a punish. It's pretty obvious that he wants to go for the demolish proc, so I'm clicking on him, getting the last hit with my E. Not missing CS. Really good. Now TF is coming, and the guy is pretty low. I don't have my ult yet. I could have committed, and I could have finished him off. My AD was just like, it's okay, this is, this is good enough. Like, now he has no ult, and I'm gonna end up, like, abusing that later. So TF did his job, <coughs> but I think I could have just committed and, and kept the dive going. Probably that we had no info on Nocturne or something. Oh yeah, we had no info on Nocturne. Then if I had no info on Nocturne... Okay, like, like I misplayed by not uh, committing to either the dive, or the idea that we need to be safe. Because then, like, I didn't commit to the dive, and then I was like, okay, I need to m make it worth it, the fact that TF came, and then I commit to the dive. <laughs> <Shut up. coughs> Sorry about that. Still end up trade killing, and it still ends up being really good. But the idea was wrong. There is, of course, room for improvement. Now I have my Kraken already. I actually saw D-Blade because Kraken is such a big spike here. And now I know that I'm way stronger, I'm feeling very confident, so I'm gonna dash in on CD. He ends up doing some weird stuff. I, I didn't really get that. So I'm just looking to play with my with my Kraken Prox. And I don't know, he turned back on me. So Okay, we'll take it. This is Masters 300 LP from last season, by the way, so. 
they do that against me, they most likely do that against you. Yeah, I, like hopefully I'm not sounding like just cocky or anything. I just, I just like really believe in what in whatever I'm telling you guys, and I just didn't like the fact that people are just talking shit on Trinomir. You know, I love that champion so much, and Trinomir is not the problem. We are Trinomir players. So this is another fundamental. Like if you can, if you can prevent him access from the lane, that's absolutely the best play to do. That's why I put the pink here cover vision here and then and then make sure that he cannot just go through me because again I have, I have a Kraken Slayer and we're being very very dominant yeah very dominant I still have ult I think so yeah I pressed it here Thought he would have more burst. AC Nocturne getting get in auto range, so boop. Instant flash. Now I'm looking, but I'm not looking too much because I don't want to give my shutdown. I have a 700 shutdown. I think I don't see a clear opportunity, so it's okay. Yeah, I'm pinging my own bounty, so TF understands why, why I'm not committing here. And now we're working on PD. I think I think I could have gone went uh, for Rage Blade to Trundle, but I mean on the other hand, Trundle the way for him to beat you is actually to kite you, um, kind of. So I guess PD is fine here. So now again, I'm gonna try to bring my lead to the rest of the team. So I push top, I pin him top, and then. I take red buff, then I kill the Gragas. Or the Nocturne actually. Or the Nocturne and the Trendle. And then I use that to go instant Drake. I take the Drake even if my jungler is being stupid and going on blue buff on a Drake timer. We're at 14 minutes, it's not early game anymore, I'm not pushing top mindlessly. No, the closest wave is actually bot wave. So I'm gonna bring that. And at this point, having an impact could just mean having the bot laners face me. Because now it's me, one of me versus two of them. So my team is on a 4v3 situation, in a 4v3 situation on Herald. I could look to kill them, but again, what do I have to lose? 1k gold. What do I have to gain? I mean, double kill and a turret, which is pretty good. But doesn't get me Herald. This turret, I'm going to get it later anyway. Um, so I'd rather like just, you know, just chill. Even if here, like I could have probably a ghosted W, went in 1v2. Um, there's a flash here. There's a heal. I had no info on Sims. Nocturne also is not showing on the map and he could be looking to ult. Yeah. Exactly, if I went crazy here, Nocturne could have ulted, and then even if I kill two of them and they do Nocturne at the end. So, you need to wait the, the, the potential cost and the pot potential rewards of your plays. Um, my team is being stupid. It's on them. We took Herald, we were really happy about that, like, like we didn't have to go for more. I'm just hovering and we took TP for that, but where I'm not gonna go in 2v5. And now I'm having again a lot of responsibility. More than a third of my team skills are on me. I have a lot of gold. Most of the gold advantage that we have is on top lane. So we're gonna need to use that. Okay, yeah, that was that was a bad play. Like see how how much they want to save my shutdown. And now I'm just giving it. I think the best play here. Here okay, I'm still feeling strong and I'm not really in a Yeah, I get the flash, that's it. And then my next E is away. And then I would just get the flash for free. Here, yes, I get the kill and I get more fed, but I give one K to Gregas. That was a big mistake on my end. Big, big mistake. That's what I don't like about shutdowns. Like, the fact that you cannot play anymore because you have a shutdown and you need to wait for 100% guaranteed played plays. 
before making them. So okay, we're gonna play for objectives now. Again, didn't change objective timers. There's a Drake soon. So I wanted to make sure that Trundle is not like just pushing a wave. Because it's Trundle. And even if it's very far behind, you don't want to just let him push. He would get like two turrets very easily and come back in the game. So I just wanted to make sure that this was not happening. And then I'm moving. We end up being late as a team. They had the position. They had the Drake. So I'm looking to at least win the fight. Get the kill on Samira. I die from this. I could have played that better. Let's see. Let me just review that for myself. What items do I have? I don't have... Oh, yeah. I don't have uh, Navari yet. I think I should click on Samira and not, and not Nocturne here. And also, I didn't need my E when I used it. And here I would... And yeah, now I have to flash because I used my E for damage. You can use your E for damage when, when you have Navari, e, but if you have PD but not Navari, e, I think you shouldn't. And here we still have flash. <coughs> and Samira will die faster. Mistakes, mistakes. So now, let's see how we use ourselves, how we use Trindamir. I'm getting close to having Navori, so most likely I'm going to play for this. Wait, what happened here? TF is going bot, so I'm going top. Um, my ED is, like, anyway, know that I'm not going to stay long on the map. I'm just looking for gold for Navori, most likely. Get Trundle's TP. Now you see that this is this is looking bad. So I decided to go for a raid, I guess. I just I completely avoid the fight. <laughs> Crash on the T2. Rotate to mid. Or do I? By this time we still have a jungler up, so I still think that we can look to dev that. We have TF, we have Hecarim. So it's all about Nocturne. I should have went earlier though. Try to pressure killing the Nocturne before Nash is actually in, uh, in smite range. Because now he can smite before he dies. Should have went uh, a bit earlier. Also, I don't know why Hecarim is not reaching uh, to try to smite this. Maybe he didn't have smite. Now we're aced, and now we're behind, 4k behind in gold. But I have three items, and I'm Trinomir, and I'm confident that my champion can be used. How did they come back that game from that point? Or like 5k gold behind. Okay. Get resource, get gold. Now the shutdowns are on them. <coughs> on Gregas and Samira. Oh, I think I do remember now. It's also about thinking like what counters me. A lot of things counter Trindamir, yes. Like Frozen Heart, like a lot of armor and Heart CC as well. So what kind of Heart CCs do they have? <coughs> Senna W and Gregus E. Like right, right now those are the two threats that I need to think about. Senna through a W and Gregus is committing. There's no threat anymore. So I go and kill Senna really fast. Stack my lethal tempo. Get a kill and take their peeling away. Gets me a shutdown on Samira, gets me a shutdown on Gregas. I was just here to punish their mistakes. Because I was looking for their mistakes as well. I was just not thinking like, oh Gregas counters my champ so hard. Or well Senna can kite, etc. I was just like very pragmatic about it, you know. Like, okay, well, Gregas counters me, but he's committing on the dive. And Senna can, can kite me with W, but she used it. And then Samira, all she has is damage, so... I don't care about this, I have my ult. I get a ton of gold here, I get a full item actually from that fight. And now Drake is up. And you see, my team created space. I could have base to buy an item, but if my team is creating space and Drake is up, well, I would just go. And be the one taking Drake. So at 14 minutes, I was the one taking Drake. At 24 minutes, I'm the one taking Drake. The two Drakes that we have, I took him. 
Because I'm Trindomir and I have attack speed and my champion is useful. My champion can do shit. Can. He's potent. Okay. Now I'm just pressuring to kill that guy. Because I'm so much stronger. But again, we have the same situation where I have most of my team's gold. I mean, I don't have more than half of it, but you get the ID. I have a lot of my team's gold, so... I don't want to just take perma split, you know. I want to make sure that someone is there. And now that someone is there... If I go crazy on the fight... Well, it's actually a 5v4 situation. A 5v4 is way easier to win than a 5v5. Especially when you're behind in gold. Now we win that fight again. Because I brought Trundle Bot. Pressured him being stronger so he doesn't contest the wave. And then move to the fight and play the 5v4. And we could review that, but I mean, what matters is just like the fact that I was there. Hit the W, E flash, hit whatever I can. Stack, stack my Rage Blade on, on Gregas into, into dashing on their back lane. Finish off Gregas. Boom, boom, boom. Really happy about that. Now it's a bit too early for Nash, because they're going to respawn for Nash, so most likely you want to take our base. Get some vision, clear some vision. I have nothing to buy, do I? Yeah, I have nothing, so I'm just stay on map. And I have the same ID, there's no TP now on Trundle, so if I can bring Trundle bot... And rotate, it's gonna be a number advantage, but Trundle is grouping, and at this point I'm kinda scared that my team goes crazy without me, I think. That's why I'm just kinda running around topside. I think I should I should maybe maybe consider trusting them here and pushing bot first. Oh but there's a trick spotting soon as well, so I guess it's fine being top. At this point. Yeah, I think I do ping. Yeah, we, we see Trundle. Well, they committed a lot and we won the fight. But... How much did they do for that fight? I took Trundle ult. I took Nocturne ult. I took Senna flash. And Senna ult. I guess it's good enough. I guess it's good enough. But I think the whole way, like the way we played that whole fight was not good. Like we're just like kind of standing around 5v5 looking for an even situation. And then I thought we trapped, we trapped Trundle, but actually we didn't really. I think the best thing would have been to do what I said, basically. Just push out bot a bit and then rotate, but it's Gracas and he has TP though, so... I guess it's decent and and they used a lot just for me like they, they were so focused on me here like having nocturne being for me when when you have a twitch in your team and nocturne is so strong into twitch i think it's 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 good enough just that but we got more than that so it's fine then we take nash and then we take Drake. now they're panicking let me team they're starting to lose everything Trindomir is full stuff now. Let's see. How do we manage that? <coughs> so most likely when you have Nash, you want to put it on different waves. As I said, the best thing is actually to send your team on the side lane and be the one pushing mid. So I guess this is going to be my idea. But we got Samira all, uh, out and the train is committing, so I guess I'm just gonna be there for the front to back. Up. Get a kill, get another, and now I let my, my team. I guess because Hecarim was pushing mid, I stayed to push bot. Up, up. Now, if we can't end, it's okay, we're gonna play for our next objectives.
could have killed the Nocturne, but I was too concerned about giving one, one K shutdown. I actually commit a lot and lose a lot for that. So now my idea is to empty the jungle, most likely, and start to push top. Because we're next thing we're gonna play for is Soul Triple Inhib Nash. And I think this fight is like, completely stupid because it doesn't get us either either like Soul, Triple Inhib, nor Nash. Just like just a fight for a fight. So getting resources. Even if I don't need them. Looking for a trap, maybe, but I'm not gonna commit. 50 seconds for Drake. Playing pressure top. And here, I think Trindermere, like, it's still a speed pusher. Like, if you manage to be that far ahead, and, and, and you're in a position where you can, like, just 1v1 your opponent, it's never gonna be a bad play. This guy has 12k gold, I have 20k gold. And he's fighting me before getting under turret, so. I'm gonna dive this, and I'll look at how fast I push, actually. Just because of attack speed. Yes, you don't have old picker anymore, but you can play for grubs early. And you have tons of attack speed. So now I get this inhib and I get pressure because Greg is defending and my team is 4v3 basically. Once again. And I'm gonna keep pressuring. Top. I don't have inhib. I don't I cannot really like pressure a fight or anything. So just playing with my ways, playing with my team. And if they commit, once again, Greg is not on me anymore. I just go for Nexus. Trindamir is something. Trindamir is relevant. Trindamir exists. I don't care about its win rate. Just like, how good are you Trindamiring, guys? Um, yeah, that's that. Yeah, that was my answer, basically, to, to all the complaints that I've heard. So, yeah, hopefully that didn't sound cocky, but instead sounded like just... just straight out information data hope that i'm giving to you guys um it's a very fun champ i don't think it's in a bad state it's in a particularly bad state we had situations where turner was 42 percent win rate when they first buffed turret shots i think and nerfed a couple things uh, around him like at some point turner got like 12 indirect nerves to him and now he's actually getting some slight buffs sometimes you know like the I think I think Grubs is overall above to Trindamir because he's such a strong laner and Grubs uh, reward good laners. Um, they have you have the uh, Frozen Heart nerf recently after it has been buffed. Like, yeah, okay, twenty three hundred gold was crazy. Uh, next patch actually people were talking a lot about the Kraken Slayer nerf, but last thing last time I checked it like Riot wasn't even talking about the nerf on Kraken Slayer, but they were talking about the buff on Rage Blade. So there's that. And and yeah, you can you can see like a lot of things happen with Trindamir. End of last season, Ranger made it like to Challenger with 75% win rate. Now he's performing, Book is performing. I'm starting to perform again, and I'm really confident about getting back to GM at least and then challenger in that split. I'm working hard for it. So yeah guys, enjoy this beautiful champion and and put the focus in again. Like it's not about the state of Trindamir, what Freyot is doing to your champion, the nerves, the items, the whatever. You're most likely not doing Trindamir right. No one is. Even Ranger he is in Trindamir, like doing Trindamir to the fullest, to the rightest. All doing mistakes and have room for improvement. So look for that, look for improvement and keep having fun with that beautiful champion. That's also my message for today. Next video is going to be tomorrow, same time, same place. Till then guys, take care of yourselves. Good luck and have fun gaming in real life. And I will see you next time. Peace guys, much love. Bye bye. Woohoo! <laughs>